My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about the Hoobs system. What is it and is it worth it for your smart home? So first, before we jump into that, I do want to also mention I'm launching a second channel today, which is all about my app Best Photos and showing just different decisions and, and, and chronicling me building new versions of the app. So I'm, I'm on my way to shipping Best Photos 3 later this year. So you'll get uh, you know regular sneak peeks into that and the development process, just seeing it evolve over time. Uh, giving feedback in the comments and other things about the process and joining in later this summer on the beta. So, uh, you know, take a look at that channel. If app development and my app best photos, you know, an iPhone and iPad, all that stuff is stuff that you're into, check out my second channel. And that'll be linked in the description below. But now back to Hoob. So Hoob stands for Homebridge Out of Box System. And you might be wondering, well, what is Homebridge? So if you have uh, accessories that work with HomeKit and you set them up, you'll you know scan some code with your smartphone and then it'll take you through uh, a HomeKit you know interface in the Home app where you're assigning the accessory a name and a room and 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 all of that stuff to get it working with HomeKit and that all works because the manufacturer has built special integration for Apple HomeKit along with maybe other smart home services as well. Now. Not every manufacturer, as a lot of us know, supports HomeKit. So HomeBridge is an open source uh, tool that allows for developers to build plugins that then enable certain types of accessories to integrate with HomeKit. Now this is unofficial. So, you know, no one's going to Apple here and getting official approval for these, but it's open source code. Anybody can see it. So, you know, in this case, I think there, there's enough eyeballs on it and stuff. It's it's not like a, a huge security threat. I mean, you always want to be a little careful, but I think some of the, you know, as long as you're installing the bigger name plugins, uh, HomeBridge can be a good option. Now, Hoobs, Homebridge out of box, meaning that you have this unit that comes pre-installed with Homebridge and with some extra stuff on top of it just to make it super easy to manage the whole process. Because if you do Homebridge installations otherwise, you have to install it yourself on something like a Raspberry Pi or maybe an old Macintosh or, or you know, you have lying around. You know, there are different options to run it, but you're gonna be doing more custom work on your own to set it up. Uh, you know, that's definitely gonna take you a little bit more time, uh, but it's also, might be something that's a little daunting if doing all kinds of custom installation uh, with something like that and, and JSON configs and API keys and other stuff. If that's going to bother you, uh, Hoobs could be a great option. And also, maybe you're the IT support for your family and you want to set up one of your friends or, or relatives with uh, some kind of home bridge system to get their smart home working together. Well, Hoops could be a great option for them too because this way, you know, you don't have to tell them over the phone how to SSH into their Raspberry Pi in their home to do something. You can, uh, you know, make it a lot easier with something like Hoops. So I set up Homebridge from scratch last year and I kind of uh, talked about my journey through that in a video last year. So I'll link that somewhere if it's something you want to go check out too. But then the team at Hoobs reached out to me earlier this year and asked if I wanted to check out their box. And of course I did. So they sent that to me, but this is still my unbiased review. That's, you know, they just sent me one for free and that's it. And so when you get the unit, uh, you know, you get this fully functional Raspberry Pi box with the power adapters and everything's ready to go. So you just, you know, plug it in and get it set up. The one thing though, when adding it to HomeKit, you will get the warning about this is not a certified accessory. So just keep that in mind. This is not officially supported by Apple, but it's not going to void any of your warranties or anything like that. Um, you know, I think in general, uh, Hoobs and Homebridge is pretty safe. Uh, they have a great uh, local website that appears on your local network to manage Hoobs. So you go to hoobs.local and then it will, uh, you know, show you this great dashboard you can sign into and configure your 
uh, whole Homebridge setup. Now this is on top of any you know graphical user interface or any other stuff that Homebridge might have. This is Hoob's custom stuff that you get only if you buy their products. I personally use my Homebridge setup to link my TP-Link smart plugs with HomeKit, and that's a very easy installation to set up on Homebridge, but it's even easier on Hoobs because you just go to the package directory, plugin directory, you search for it, and you click install, and it's done. No messing with JSON configs or any kind of API keys or you know custom configuration for your accessories. It'll help walk you through all of that. It's really well done in that way. Another thing is, you know, as I add or remove smart plugs over time from TP-Link, in order to get Homebridge to update those in HomeKit, you need to reboot the Homebridge device. And it's just really easy to do that where you can just log into hoobs.local and reboot the device from there. You don't need to, you know, do anything else. And, and you know, you could even just unplug the box and, and wait a second and plug it back in. They have all of the auto reboot into Homebridge stuff configured as you might guess. Now, that said, the Hoobs uh, web interface, well, it's really slick. It, it did fall down for me a few times where, you know, the, the uh, plugin search would just stop working and, uh, you know, various other times, different links on the pages would stop working all of a sudden. But if I just refresh the web page or unplugged the Hoobs box and then plugged it back in, um, you know, either of those would totally fix the problem. Uh, and, you know, it's software. They're probably always working on updates to it. But I did want to call out that my experience with the website wasn't completely seamless, but uh, I'd say it's definitely way easier than setting up Homebridge by yourself. And then, you know, anecdotally, as far as just using the Hoobs box over the past couple of months, I found it to perform inside of HomeKit a little faster than my Raspberry Pi. Maybe it's just a little bit nicer Raspberry Pi than what I had. Uh, you know, maybe it's stuff that Hoobs has done to tune the installation so it runs very smoothly. But I found that, you know, tapping the smart plugs and getting them to react with Hoobs very straightforward. I don't have, you know, drops of accessory not responsive uh, nearly as much as like I, I did with something like a, like a Homebridge. Hoobs has been incredibly reliable and incredibly fast for me. So uh, just some anecdotal data there about uh, my experience with Hoobs using it with my TP-Link smart plugs. Now, the Hoobs box itself is pretty expensive as far as these things go. It's about $170 US right now on their website, and uh, that you know comes with the whole setup out of the box. If you do already have your own Raspberry Pi for some reason, you can get the pre-configured Hoobs uh, memory card to stick in there, and that's only $20. Uh, so that might be something you want to consider. I haven't tried that setup myself, but the price does look compelling. Um, but either way, you want to consider too, how much is it to just go get the accessories, uh, you know, that, that are compatible with HomeKit and equivalent to the accessories you have, uh, rather than using something like Homebridge and uh, Hoobs. You know, for me, I have a bunch of those TP-Link smart plugs, but still, I could probably go buy some Vocalink HomeKit compatible smart plugs or something like that and, and replace those. But personally, I still like to just play with Homebridge and tell you guys about it and, and try things like Hoobs. So I like to keep this integration going, but it's definitely something you want to consider is what is the, the switching costs and the convenience of adding this uh, in your own setup especially given the price tag. Now, that said, why would you want to buy Hoobs versus setting up your home bridge yourself? Now, I'm a developer. I've done, you know, plenty of things that make me feel very comfortable with managing a home bridge server on my own. You know, I can totally manage the, the JSON config and, you know, SSH into it and do anything else to get home bridge up and running and, and, and maintain it over time. That said, even though I can, it doesn't mean that I want to. And it is really nice to have Hoobs just kind of take care of that problem for you. You know, it's just really easy to manage plugins, install, uninstall, update, uh, do all the stuff you need to do to maintain it. And especially because you know, Homebridge is probably one of those things you touch maybe every few months 
because you need to for some reason, and that might be even frequent. So what I'm getting at is that coming back to Hoobs after like not touching it for a while, it's probably gonna be familiar enough that you can figure out what you need to do very easily. And, and again, you know, it's just, it's making this technical problem that yes, I totally could solve myself. It's, it's taking it away and solving it for me. And I think there's some value in that. And I mentioned earlier in this video, if you have friends or family you're setting this up for, I think this would be a way better option than going with something custom, especially if they're less tech savvy than you and you're kind of helping them through this. Now, I do have a couple closing caveats with Hoobs and HomeBridge in general. First is if you're looking to integrate Nest with HomeKit, I highly recommend you check out the Starling Home Hub. Even if Nest is just one of the things you wanna integrate, I think that the Starling does such a great job with the Google authentication and getting things up and running with Nest and, and they just keep adding all kinds of custom details. They expose a doorbell to uh, home kit very nicely with all kinds of details and different you know sensors and things so I would recommend you know you you can probably get to where a starling is again with homebridge if you really want to try all kinds of different options and configurations but I would way prefer and way more recommend the Starling Home Hub specifically for Nest. Now that said, for any other integration, I think that Hoobs is a really great option for HomeBridge. Even if you know what you're doing with HomeBridge, it can just make it way easier to manage than having uh, the HomeBridge uh, box you know, that, that you have to manage yourself. But the bigger picture on all of this is, you know, I gotta put my software engineer hat on and basically say, I think all of this stuff is a giant hack at the end of the day. You're doing something that's unofficially supported. You're putting two pieces together that aren't meant to fit together, you know, in HomeKit and these other accessories. And well, it's often very stable. It often is pretty, you know, reliable in what it does. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's still something that I don't, you know, I would rather avoid than have to go into. You know, it, it, it can be a really nice hack, a really nice solution to get the job done and connect to disparate things. But still, I would say if you're going out and looking at new accessories and you want them to work with HomeKit, then buy accessories that work with HomeKit. So I have a link down in the description to the Hooves website. You can go check out their products and order it directly from them if it's something you're interested in. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already for more videos on Apple Smart Home Tech. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really does help people find this video and the channel in general. And let me know in the comments below, what do you do with HomeBridge? Do you have any plugins installed? Uh, you know, it'd just be interesting to hear what people are using HomeBridge for and how they use it to get their uh, smart home to work together. Or if you've been able to completely avoid HomeBridge altogether, uh, you know, share about that and, and, and what you've had to get or avoid to make that happen. Um, thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.